So, as you can see there, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be focusing now on the uh, key role of the regions um, as we head into our series of panels. I would like to introduce our speakers who will be joining us on stage here. First of all, I would like to introduce Apostolos Tsitsi Kostas, who is the governor of the central Macedonia region of Greece. Please, sir, come and join us on the stage. We're also going to be joined, thank you, by Olget Geblevitz, who's the president of the EPP group in the European Committee of the Regions, that vital institution. If I could ask you to sit in the middle, sir. Thank you very much. Um, Isabel Ayuso, the president of the community of Madrid as well. Thank you. If you sit here, please. Thank you. Rafael Tovskowski, the mayor of Warsaw. And we will also be joined by Emil Bock, who is the mayor of Cluj-Napoca here in Romania. Thank you. Please, sir, thank you. This would be fine. Thank you. Great. And we also have, last but not least, Sven Schulze, who is the Minister for Economic Affairs, Tourism, Agriculture and Forestry of the Saxony-Anhalt region in Germany. Please take your seat, sir. Thank you. Well, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by such a, a wide panel of local uh, mayors and uh, big cities, but also big regions as well that are engaging in transformative growth. Um, Olga Gublovitz, uh, as the president of the EPP group of the European uh, Committee on the Regions, I'd just like to ask you to make a few opening remarks, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And first of all, uh, welcome to all of you. Buena Jua Bucharesti. First of all, I would like to thank you. Thank you very much, uh, our president, Manfred Weber, for wise leadership and for taking us on board. Uh, of course, secondly, I would like to thank a lot of our great friend Siegfried Mureshan for a clear-cut support all the time. Then I would like to thank all the Romanian friends, uh, our president Nicola Ciuca, uh, our host uh, uh, Emil Bock, not only for hospitality, but for genuine friendship on a daily basis. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, today we are here as a uh, locally elected leaders and uh, uh, mayors, presidents, uh, to prove how strong EPP is on the ground and to acknowledge that even in some countries, temporarily, we are not in power, we are still very, very strongly rooted on the ground, on the grassroots level, in the villages, in the cities, in the regions. And then to, uh, to prove that every day our EPP team is working very hard together with our people to, uh, to solve their problems, to provide them with a, uh, with a success, to provide them with a health, wealth and prosperous life. So it is our mission and we want to today share uh, our vision on how we are doing on the ground. I'm more than happy that today, uh, today we are uh, together with a, such a strong and charismatic leaders like sitting uh, next to me, uh, leaders from the biggest, uh, from the biggest political group in the European Committee of Regions, just like uh, Isabel, who is uh, the, who made her Madrid region the really resilient and, and really vibrant, uh, just like Apostolos, uh, who work on the daily basis together with the people on the ground to provide them with. A, prosperity and to sense of security, just like, uh, just like Rafał, the mayor of Warsaw, uh, who fought for democracy in Poland and right now is transforming our capital city Warsaw in a modern and green city, just like Sven, uh, who proved and who made the, 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 the saxony anhalt region even more competitive in terms of uh, automotive industry. And of course, last but not least, like Emil Bog, the, the very popular and very appreciated, very respected mayor of Cluj-Napoca. I need to uh, underline that a lot of people in Poland, a lot of mayors in Poland are jealous that, uh, that Emil decided 
uh, thanks to his wise vision and EU money to build a new metro system in Cluj and we are really following it. So we have a lot of experience which we brought here. Why we brought it here? Because we believe that only united we can win European elections, that we can root, that we can work together on the ground to convince our people in our villages, in our cities to go vote to win our united Europe. And I think that we will be successful uh, in these European elections and we will provide uh, our EPP party with success thanks to our unity. Let's win Europe together. Thank you very much. President Gibbs, thank you very much for that opening statement. Um, President Tsitsikostas, uh, you've just been uh, elected and you've won again at the, won in the central Macedonian region with over 60% of the vote. I mean, how do you sort of build trust among your local electorate? Is there a lesson there in what you've managed to achieve that can be extrapolated towards the upcoming European parliamentary elections, for instance? Well, first of all, let me begin by condemning the attack against President Zelensky, which just happened uh, some time ago. And uh, it is uh, good to know that uh, he, his staff, as well as the Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis and his staff who were supposed to meet with him are well uh, and were not hurt by this attack. Now, to begin, let me first of all uh, thanks a lot uh, to our hosts, Manfred Weber, of course, and uh, Emil Bock for uh, hosting us here in this beautiful city. And, uh, around esteemed colleagues who have uh, worked a lot and very hard during these past years, during this permanent crisis era, as I call it, uh, with one crisis following the other. Uh, we, they have showcased how important the role of regions and cities is uh, in uh, this difficult environment that we live in. And uh, you have done that through hard work and in order to answer also to your question, I would say showcasing not only the importance of regions and cities, but also the fact that regions and cities are the actors who bring results in every city, village, in every community. And this happens through our work. So yes, trust is the key word, but how can we manage to have the trust of the citizens? only by showing to them that we really care about their problems, that we know how to respond and how to tackle their problems, and if we have the know-how of how to implement the policies on the ground using mostly European funds. And this is something I would like to stress out because, you know, in my region, Central Macedonia, like in most regions of Europe today, most of the public works that are happening are a result of European funding. So Europe is in every citizen's life, everyday life. For example, in Central Macedonia, we built in this couple of years 20 new schools, 16 hospitals, 20 medical centers. We established a digital region with 600 digital services. We have created 190 parks in our cities financed more than 10,000 SMEs for 3,000 projects of innovation. We established 150 structures uh, for supporting people in need. We invested in renewable energy sources, and the results are here. We had an increase in Central Macedonia last year of 9% in our GDP. We created 70,000 jobs, and we are now one of the 10 fastest regions in innovation. All this to give you an example of how regions and cities can really implement European policies and can really, through their work, gain the trust of the citizens. Thank you very much, President Tsitsikostas. Uh, Sven Schulze, I suppose it's important I come to you to talk about innovation and transformation of a region because obviously over the last 20 years, the CDU has, um, over the time you've governed Saxony and helped, you've sort of transformed from different types of manufacturing now to innovation. You've got this big investment by Intel in a plant. Um, and a lot of that also involves cohesion funds, doesn't it? It involves uh, putting that money to work to make a difference and changing the actual economic base. 
Ja, vielen Dank. Ich, ich werde in Deutsch sprechen. Wir haben viele Delegierte hier, auch aus Deutschland, aus Österreich, aus Regionen, wo man auch die deutsche Sprache durchaus nutzt. Und deswegen möchte ich das auch in meiner Muttersprache machen und mal sagen, dass wir in meiner Heimat, in Sachsen-Anhalt, eine Region haben, wo man sieht, wie Europa wirkt. Wir haben über Jahrzehnte seit 1989 sehr stark von Europa profitiert. Es gibt, gab viel Geld zum einen, aber es gab auch viel Unterstützung auf andere Art und Weise zum anderen. Nur das hat dazu geführt, dass der Osten Deutschlands, die Bundesländer, die man bei uns neue Bundesländer nennt, in Deutschland, dass die sich weiterentwickeln konnten. Aber wir kommen jetzt in eine neue Zeit und Sie haben gerade erwähnt, wir haben in Sachsen-Anhalt in der Region, wo ich als Wirtschaftsminister die Verantwortung trage, die größte Investition gerade, die wir in ganz Europa haben. Das Unternehmen Intel investiert dort gerade mehr als 30 Milliarden Euro. Und das Unternehmen Intel macht das deshalb, weil es den European Chips Act gibt. Weil Ursula von der Leyen und weil das Europäische Parlament, weil die Kommission, weil alle gesagt haben, wir müssen resilienter werden, wir müssen weniger abhängig sein von anderen Regionen auf dieser Welt und wir wollen in Europa führend sein. Und wir werden dort in meiner Heimat, und da bin ich auch stolz drauf, in allzu ferner, nicht allzu ferner Zukunft die modernsten Chips dieser Welt produzieren. Für die modernsten Techniken dieser Welt, für das ganze Thema künstliche Intelligenz. Wir werden dort etwas machen. Wir werden dort Chips produzieren, die heute noch gar nicht entwickelt sind. Im Übrigen mit Maschinen, die es auch heute noch gar nicht gibt. Aber wir aus Europa heraus, da ist beispielsweise auch ASML aus Niederlanden zu nennen und andere, wir entwickeln diese Techniken und das zeigt, wie Europa wirkt. Ich bin auch Landwirtschaftsminister. Wir wissen, wie es den Landwirten gerade geht, wie viele Demonstrationen es gerade weltweit nicht, aber in Europa zumindest gibt, weil die Landwirte unzufrieden sind. Wir haben es gerade auch in Brüssel erlebt, wir erleben es in Deutschland. Aber auch dafür ist es wichtig, es weiterzuentwickeln, neue Techniken zu entwickeln. Und das macht, machen Entscheidungen aus Brüssel, aus Straßburg. Diese Entscheidungen müssen aber transferiert werden in die Regionen hinein. Und das machen wir, die Vertreter, die hier vorne gerade sitzen, das machen viele Menschen auch in der European People's Party. Und das ist das Wichtige, was ich auch noch mal sagen will. Wir arbeiten von, von der Kommissionschefin Ursula von der Leyen, vom Europäischen Parlament mit Roberta Metzola, mit Manfred Weber, bis hin in die Regionen bei uns, Friedrich Merz als Parteivorsitzender in, in Deutschland, der CDU, bis hin zu den Regionen, wo wir wieder die Verantwortung tragen, konsistent an einem Thema, nämlich wie entwickeln wir Europa weiter. Und deswegen brauchen wir eine starke, eine starke EPP. Wir brauchen ein starkes Ergebnis bei den Europawahlen, denn wir wissen, wie man Europa entwickelt. Und Sie haben es ja selbst gesagt, ich bin stolz darauf, in meiner Heimat Parteivorsitzender zu sein, wo wir als CDU seit mehr als 20 Jahren die Verantwortung tragen und unsere Heimat fortentwickeln. Vielen Dank, uh, Herr Minister. Um, Schulze, thank you very much for that. Um, I'm going to come just quickly to the, the mayors of the two cities that we have here, because obviously that is the perspective of a region where you know, you're trying to uh, change your industrial base. But Rafael Trudowski, you Warsaw has been in the headlines in so many English language newspapers and magazines. One of them I contribute to as a whole front page special on your city's transformation. Um, and it comes at a crucial time, obviously, when the world is looking at Poland. I mean, what, what are the solutions you think that have made such a difference and can make a difference for the EPP as we head into these parliamentary elections? Well, first of all, the, the most important thing that we won with the populists and uh, the important lesson is to be very concrete about the threat. Because I think that the biggest threat that is before us are, of course, the populist parties which are trying to undermine what we are doing in Europe. But sometimes we use the language about them, which is too general. I mean, we, we, we talk about the rule of law or that democracy un, is under threat. That's too general. People do not really understand that. So we have to translate that into the language that people understand. So for example, that they want to uh, adopt medieval anti-abortion laws and take away women's rights. For example, that they want to make Europe weak because they are not going to actually tackle the problems that are the most important for us, such as the problem of uh, security. For example, that they are introducing indoctrination in schools and so on. And only if you actually make citizens aware that the populist threat is a threat to our basic rights then you can actually meet the challenge head on and start winning elections with those guys. Secondly, is that you have to be as concrete as possible. So for example, what we did in Warsaw, we were talking about women's rights, but we 
talked to, uh, to, uh, to women in, in Warsaw and we asked them, what are their real needs? And they said, you know, our real needs is that no one can take care of our small kids. So we cannot come back to work when we want. So we decided to start creating those preschools and offer free preschools for all the inhabitants of Warsaw. And we've created almost 20,000 places. And not only that we've built preschools, but we actually open up businesses, allowed women to open up businesses and open up preschools. And now when I meet women in Warsaw, they simply say, yes, I was able to actually go back to work. So we have to be concrete. When we talked about global warming, we said that we are going to actually get rid of the coal power stoves in Warsaw. And we actually give a precise number that there were 15,000 of them. And what we did, we eliminated 80% of them. So you have to be concrete so that people can see the result. And also in European elections, you have to be concrete about the policies. And uh, one thing which is most important for me, uh, I spent quite a few years in the European Parliament and I was an EPP coordinator on the Constitutional Affairs Committee, okay? Guys, so I know it pretty well. But when I hear now that the most important thing that we want to discuss is weighing of votes, qualified majority voting and so on and so forth, this is not the way to go. We need to talk about policies and we need to be concrete about that and not only things like security, but things that people are really aware of and are afraid of. For example, how to harness artificial intelligence how to be able to actually implement Green Deal in such a way as to involve the citizens. And the last message I have for you is the role of the local and regional uh, authorities. We are the guys who walk the streets of our cities, of our villages, and we can translate what we are doing on the European level into concrete actions and also have a conversation and defend some of the EU policies. Because if we don't, that's what happens with Green Deal in agriculture, where we prepare ideas, then we do not really discuss them enough with the farmers, and the farmers are on the streets of Warsaw and other cities. That's why you should involve us, because we know how to, how to talk to the people on the ground. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Trotsky. Um, Isabel Diaz Ayuso, um, you won a second time uh, in 2021, and you actually doubled the seats for the Partido Popular in the Madrid region. I mean, how did you do that? Was it the focus, as we just heard there from Mayor Trubosky, to say it's a focus on um, policy rather than actual procedure, you know, to sort of demystify how things come about at, a, at an EU level? Muchas gracias. En primer lugar, quiero saludar, presidente de IPP, queridos compañeros, presidente Feijó, delegación española. Creo que cuando somos verdaderamente IPP, Partido Popular, es cuando conseguimos amplias mayorías y unir a la sociedad en torno a los valores más importantes sobre los que se sustanció la Unión Europea, la libertad y la vida, los dos bienes más preciados que tiene el hombre. Porque se presupone que a los populares la gestión se nos da bien y lo hacemos con excelencia y con rigor. Pero hay que hacer, llamar a las cosas por su nombre. Yo sé que es complicado a veces en política, pero no hemos venido a ser bien quedas, solamente a hacer unos amigos, mientras fallamos a la verdad y al futuro y a los jóvenes. Y por eso yo no me resigno a hacer eso, porque si no, no nos van a soportar. Represento a la región capital de España, la región que está más de moda, o una de las que están más de moda en el mundo, por ser alegre, por ser mestiza, plural, por tener la mejor vida nocturna, que ahora nos quieren quitar los de siempre, ser solidaria, integradora, y defiendo además un modo de ver la vida que va más allá, insisto, de la simple gestión, y esto va de no renunciar a nuestros principios y a nuestros valores. Ahí está Occidente, nacimos ahí, y se tenga o no se tenga fe, tenemos una raíz judeocristiana, tenemos unas raíces de Grecia, de Roma, del derecho, que no podemos olvidar. Por eso no considero que lo que ha pasado en Francia esta semana sea ningún avance, porque creo que nuestra defensa es la de la vida, y más en una región, la europea, en su conjunto, que se está envejeciendo. Tampoco considero que la utilización de las drogas con uso recreativo, como pasa en Alemania, eso es progreso, eso es prosperidad y eso es Europa. Como tampoco lo que está pasando en España, para lo que pido toda la ayuda, es lo que sustenta la Unión Europea en nuestros valores. 
porque nos estamos olvidando de los problemas reales, de la juventud, de qué Europa les vamos a dejar, qué herencia. Egoístas que estamos mirándonos a día de hoy, pero no estamos pensando en un futuro en el que muchos países fuera de nuestro orden mundial van a tener muchos más habitantes que la propia Unión Europea. ¿En qué futuro se van a desenvolver los jóvenes? La inteligencia artificial, si no es bajo unos valores determinados, no será inteligencia artificial, será otra cosa. Las gentes del campo abandonadas. El envejecimiento de la población es evidente. La soledad de los niños a mayores, menos hermanos, menos tiempo con los abuelos, menos realidad, menos humanismo. Y los jóvenes necesitan que lideremos proyectos europeos de investigación, de vanguardia. Como tampoco defiendo, por tanto, lo que os sucede en España. Y aquí viene nuestra, nuestra reclamación. Madrid está creciendo como nunca hasta ahora porque somos una región que dice no a las dictaduras, al totalitarismo. Es la casa común de todos los que huyen de los terroristas, de las imposiciones, de los liberticidas, de los nacionalismos. Ojo, y mañana pido a la Unión Europea que escuche lo que se va a votar mañana en España. Esa amnistía que va a permitir que personas que han cometido graves delitos contra la convivencia y la unidad de España que hacen listas negras de jueces y de periodistas, se salgan con la suya por mantener a Pedro Sánchez por siete votos. Personas que han cometido graves delitos, corrupción, personas que han estado juntos y aliados con Putin, personas que están con las dictaduras como la venezolana, de lo que se está conociendo mucho en estos días, que con fondos europeos han comprado material en mal estado, utilizando los fondos de todos los europeos en el covid han permitido que la tercera autoridad del Estado, la presidenta del Congreso, la que está pergeñando todo esto, sea una de las involucradas. Contactos con todo lo peor. Y por eso yo pido al Grupo Popular Europeo que no haya compadreo con ninguno de ellos, con Pedro Sánchez, porque eso no es convivencia. Que es capaz de haber relacionado al presidente del Grupo con los nazis con tal de atacarle. De eso estamos hablando en España. No se le puede blanquear nunca más. No abandonemos la verdad o los ciudadanos nos van a abandonar a nosotros. Están redactando el Código Penal a conveniencia de los delincuentes en España, que se sepa, que están expulsando a los españoles de su tierra y que las próximas elecciones al País Vasco van a llevar a personas condenadas en firme por terrorismo para mantener a Pedro Sánchez. Insisto, por eso la receta es no renunciar a nuestros principios el daño que le están haciendo a España y, por tanto, a, toda la, a la Unión Europea es cosa de todos. No tienen límites y parece mentira, ¿verdad? Porque estamos en Europa y nos creemos que todo va siempre bien. ¿Cómo va a ser en Europa? Está ocurriendo aquí. Y por eso el éxito del Partido Popular en Madrid ha sido ponernos frontalmente a lo que se va a votar mañana en España. El éxito del Partido Popular en Madrid ha sido más Partido Popular que nunca. Y hemos pasado, por tanto, en solo cuatro años de 30 escaños a 70. Por eso, lo que pido es ser más populares que nunca y no faltar nunca ni a la verdad ni a la realidad. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias también. Thank you very much, Isabella Russo, the uh, president of the committee of Madrid and mayor of Madrid. And obviously, regional affairs very keenly felt um, in Spain for obvious reasons. Um, I'd love to come to you, Emil Box. Thank you very much for your patience and waiting. Um, Cluj. I've always wanted to go to your wonderful city, and one day I promise I will. Um, the, the transformation of cities is, as we just heard there from two mayors, is crucial, but it also has to feed into the broader political apparatus, doesn't it, the landscape that we see today. If you're looking at the EPP's manifesto that was obviously unveiled uh, just overnight, do you see your priorities reflected in that? Vă mulțumesc în primul rând pentru această invitație și mulțumir președintelui Weber și leadership-ului EPP pentru faptul că permite autorităților locale și regionale să arate că sunt parte acestei mari familii a partidului nostru și că împreună am reușit și vom reuși și în alegerile europarlamentare care urmează din viitor și partidului nostru și Uniunii Europene. De aceea, acest manifest pe care îl vom discuta și vota reprezintă, par, practic, esența fiecarei entități din această uh, Europa. Acum, uh, eu pornesc de la o definiție mai largă. 
Ce este democrația? Democrația este guvernarea poporului cu poporul și pentru popor. Government of the people, by the people, for the people. Este atât de important să nu uităm partea asta finală, pentru popor. Noi cei care suntem aleși locali sau europeni sau naționali, cât timp vom avea prioritate absolută preocuparea de a servi interesul public major, șapte zile din șapte, două, 4 zile din 24, 365 de zile din 365 de zile vom fi învingători. Deci nu există rețetă magică a câștigării alegerilor. Colegii mei au prezentat câteva ingrediente, pentru că politica este o știință la fel de exactă ca matematica, să știți. Iar unul dintre ingrediente este ce a spus președintele Țițicostas, încrederea pe care trebuie să o câștigi și să pierde atât de repede. Esența încrederii stă în preocuparea constantă pentru interesul public. Al doilea element este viziunea și ascultarea oamenilor. Nu poți să faci un manifest din laboratoarele de inteligență artificială. Oricât de superb ar fi inteligența artificială. Manifestul trebuie să bazeze pe problemele reale și pe soluții concrete la problemele oamenilor. Cea mai bună politică este politica rezolvării problemelor oamenilor. Capacitatea de a asculta, după aceea trebuie să fie transcrisă în acțiune, în viziune. Nu există comunitate în universul ăsta, în Europa, în România, să nu aibă un avantaj competitiv. Obiectivul nostru este să identificăm acel avantaj, să-l potențăm și să oferim oamenilor slujbe bine plătite și calitatea vieții. Dacă această preocupare există, cu siguranță noi putem reuși. Asta am făcut și noi la Cluj, după prăbușirea comunismului, ne-am dat seama că industria agrară nu mai este un viitor al orașului. Și ne-am luat avantajul competitiv de a avea 10 universități, peste 100.000 de studenți și am spus economia cu noastră bazată pe inovare este viitorul și am credit cu ajutorul Europei un puternic centru de inovare din centrul și este Europei. Și mă bucur că acest manifest pe care noi îl susținem astăzi are pe de o parte economia de piață, competitivitatea Europei, dar și cealaltă față a monedei, solidaritatea și coeziunea. Atâta vreme cât vom avea mână în mână și mergând împreună economia de piață și coeziunea vom fi învingători în Europa, o Europa care doar cu Partidul Popular European, care așa cum ați demonstrat, a reușit cel puțin cinci crize să le domine și, le stăpânească, și să le stăpânească, e singura forță politică, repet, care poate oferi cetățenilor cea mai bună șansă să avem pace, prosperitate și viitor în Europa. Just briefly, thank you very much, um, uh, Emil Bock, Mayor Bock, just briefly, which policies do you think that you've managed to sort of implement in Cluj that you think really have people have gained traction with, you know, people have noticed. You were just saying there before, it's, it's, it's not enough to say, oh, you know, we've done this and we will do that, we will do the other. You actually have to show people the difference you've made on the ground, like, for instance, Mayor Tchaikovsky has made. My president mentioned about that our vision to solve the problem of congestion, having the specificity of the city to build up a metro system using the European money. It's a green project, it's a European money, and it's showing to the people that you, Europe, are here in every corner of Europe. The second element, freedom of movement is a religion in the European Union. Let's be clear. But in the same time, freedom to stay home and not to be forced to leave your home country, your region, your city due to the economic reason, it's also freedom in Europe. Yep. So offering the best condition possible, working the quality of life, infrastructure with European money, you show that Europe is providing the best possible solution for you. Thank you very much. And later on throughout the course of our future panels, we're also going to get a chance to talk about turning that brain drain you're referring to into a brain gain. Brain to brain gain, to brain circulation. Absolutely. Um, I just want to ask briefly the rest of our other panelists, if you can, just tell me in one minute or so, uh, starting from you, Mr. Schulze, um, whether you think your priorities are reflected in the manifesto that we've seen unveiled overnight. Thank you. Naja, es ist, ist schon so, man kann vieles aufschreiben und Papier ist auch geduldig. Ich glaube, das Wichtige ist, dass es Menschen gibt, die das, was wir aufgeschrieben haben, auch umsetzen. Dass es Menschen gibt, die vor Ort äh, als Abgeordnete des Europäischen Parlaments zum Beispiel oder als Minister oder was in welcher Form auch immer, als Bürgermeister in der Lage sind, das, was wir uns in der Theorie überlegen, in der Praxis umzusetzen. Und dann schaffen wir es auch, die Menschen entsprechend für uns zu gewinnen und ich glaube, wir haben die besten Ideen. Und wenn man sich anschaut, wie es nicht funktioniert, dann kann man sich gerade die aktuelle Bundesregierung in Deutschland anschauen. Das wollen wir so nicht. So arbeitet man nicht mit den Menschen und für die Menschen. Aber wir haben gute Ideen, auch in diesem Manifest. Und da gibt es viele, viele Punkte, die man beginnend 
aus Brüssel bis hin in das letzte Dorf in Europa umsetzen kann. Und das sind die guten Ideen der EVP. So good ideas in there. Now we need to see implementation. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Rafael uh, Trebskowski, as mayor of Warsaw, are your priorities reflected here in this manifesto? Well, I mean, this is the most important message that we carry on to the European elections, the added value of the European Union. I mean, you cannot bring on investment without Europe. You cannot actually tackle any of the existential problems that we have without the European Union. Because if you look at the questions of security, uh, if you look at the questions of migration, Warsaw welcomed 300,000 uh, Ukrainian uh, refugees. If you're talking about uh, global warming uh, and how to tackle that in sync with our people so that we actually create jobs, if we talk about competitiveness, all of those things that are reflected in the, in the manifesto cannot be done by countries alone. And in the rise of nationalism, that's exactly what we need to do and need to stress to actually convince everyone that the European Union brings added value. And if it includes the regional and local authorities through a bit of, also a bit of direct funding, where we can actually push some of our governments to be even more ambitious, then we are going to uh, arrive at the results that we want and stay true to our values. Thank you. Apostol Tsitsikostas? Yes. Well, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, our colleagues who worked on the manifesto. They have done a great job. And let me stress out one point out of the manifesto, which I consider to be of crucial importance, because I'm really happy to see that our political family, the EPP, is defending cohesion policy. Because what is cohesion policy, if we think about it? Cohesion policy is not just a word. It's not just an instrument, but it's the multi-year bottom-up instrument tool of the European Union for sustainable development. And it is the tool that we have if we want to be able to show to the citizens that Europe is not something distance, distant to them. It is something that affects their everyday life every day. And so it is through this instrument that we make the citizens feel on board of the project of the European Union because they see the works that are being done are through these cohesion funds. And of course, through cohesion, we manage to bring Europe closer to the citizens because they can see how pragmatic Europe finally is. So in my opinion, it is very important, and I need to stress this out, to fight in the next couple of years for a stronger cohesion policy. And again, it is the only way that we will close the gap between urban and rural areas. It is the only way to stop the division between first and second class citizens. And this is the kind of Europe that people expect from us. And this is the kind of EPP values that people want to see from us. So as the number one political family in Europe today, having the power and being strong among mayors and governors all over Europe, we are the ones who can showcase the importance not only of cohesion, but of the European Union in their lives. And that's what we do every day on the ground, being the link between Europe and the citizens. And I know you've been quite vocal on the subject of first and second class um, citizens and that issue in the EU. So thank you very much for addressing that also in your response to this manifesto. Um, President Gebrevitz, would you agree? What other priorities are important for you that are reflected in this manifesto? I don't like to uh, read all this book. Uh, <laughs> you can find it in the surrounding. Uh, it is our leaflet uh, with our uh, input into the manifesto and I'm more than happy and I'm very proud that uh, that we uh, were successful that uh, all party took our ideas on board but what I would like to only uh, maybe one only one idea it is the uh, implementation of territorial impact assessment I know that it is very technical but uh, uh, being very uh, very clear we need to check if something is when we uh, when we building the new legislation in Europe, if something is applicable, is feasible in every region in our uh, in our uh, Europe, because for example, taking uh, the, 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 w just one example uh, about the forestry, for example, we wanted to, in the Nature Restoration Act put all forestry in the same box, 
So how to put the forestry in the north region of, of North Sweden with, for example, our, um, our friend uh, Juanma Andalusia? Uh, it is completely impossible. So firstly, before every implementation, just to avoid any protests, we need to uh, implement some kind of technical check if it is possible on the ground. And it is my main message. So once again, I would like to thank you and I would like to encourage you to visit our stands on the first floor from our regions and our cities to see how we can implement in the smart way some projects on the ground which improve lives of our citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you. And one just final word for you, Isabella Yuzo. Just quickly, uh, the, the document, the, the, the manifesto, does it deliver for you? Solamente decir que evidentemente nadie es más que nadie, pero sí que hay unas ideas que se han demostrado a lo largo de los años que han traído más prosperidad, más libertad y son las que han sustentado este proyecto europeo y especialmente IPP. Creo que mientras continuemos por esa senda atendiendo, como bien decíais, a las peculiaridades de cada país, pero a un proyecto común que nos ha de unir en torno a esos valores, pensando en el futuro, porque hemos disfrutado de las mayores décadas de prosperidad y libertad gracias a padres y abuelos, pues que pensemos ahora los que están por venir, que merecen también legar en herencia un proyecto como este, que fuera de él la vida no es igual, es mucho más difícil, es mucho más austera y mucho más complicada. En pocos lugares del mundo se vive como en Europa. Y lo que pido es que pensemos qué nos ha traído hasta aquí para que lo defendamos pensando, como digo, no en nosotros, sino los que están por venir. Es nuestra obligación. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Isabel Uso. And I would like to now say we're going to have a chance to discuss some of those issues in our future panels. I would like to thank all of our guests who have been joining us, three mayors of European Union cities and also presidents of regions, uh, EPP group uh, presidents and representatives on com committees that are vital to how the EU works and also um, minister as well for Saxony and Health. Thank you all for joining us today.